Okay, so when I was younger, I wanted to be a ship captain. I wanted to sail my boat in the open ocean. But then I realized it's very, very hard. You have to be aware of a lot of things. And when things get turbulent and there's a storm, it becomes 10 times harder. You have to be aware of the ship, of the elements. You have to plan, strategize. There's a lot going on. This is exactly what investing is. Investing is navigating a boat through turbulent waters. But what happens when you add two wars, one in Ukraine, one in the Middle East, the geopolitics of it, you get a tsunami. So how do you invest, how do you navigate a boat in a tsunami? Well, this is exactly what this video is for. In this video, I'll explain how to invest in geopolitical uncertainty in turbulent times in a time of war. So number one, you have to diversify more, more than ever. Because you see, sometimes when certain regions and countries go down and become more unstable, others go up. A lot of the time, the global economy is a zero-sum game. One goes down, one goes up. In times of uncertainty, you have to diversify so you can capture whatever goes up so you don't get stuck in the region that actually takes the brunt. Now, number two, defensive strategies. And that kind of splits into two. One of them is obviously literal defensive strategies. Defense companies like Raytheon, like Lockheed Martin, there's a whole list of defense contractors in times of war that tend to outperform. But there's another side to it. Besides defense stocks, there's also the defense strategies. So, you know, some stocks, some industries perform better when things get uncertain and people kind of get scared. And I have a list here. Consumer staples, healthcare, telecom. People need their medicine, they will use their phones, and they will use the basic necessities, even if things get uncertain and really, really bad. And that's where you kind of find a safe haven in times of travel. Number three, the good old bonds. Bonds is the safe haven in bad times. You want proof? Don't listen to me. Listen to Bill Ackman. Bill Ackman had a massive short on the long-term bonds in the US. He just covered it or closed it, doesn't really matter. The reason he did that because now everybody's piling into bonds. Why? Because it's a safe haven. You get kind of an insulation from all this risk with a very reasonable return. So bonds is a good place to hide when things get rough. You know, Bill Ackman says it, it's not me. Number four, you have to increase your cash position. I know that's scary in times of inflation. We know all this, blah, 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 yada, yada, yada. But when things get uncertain, you want to have a third, at least a third in cash for whatever happens. Because sometimes cash can be your best friend, definitely in times of uncertainty. Number five, commodities usually tend to go up in times of crisis. You know, the food supplies, the energy supplies, the logistics, everything goes haywire and commodities become more expensive. It's just the way it is. Agriculture will get hurt. You know, wheat production in Ukraine and Russia, we told you all about this for, for months, right? So commodities tend to be a nice safe haven in times of trouble. And I'm not saying, and I'm not, you know, saying that you should make money off of people suffering from around the world. I'm just saying you have a portfolio to manage and you have to adjust it accordingly so it fits better to what's going on geopolitically. Everybody does this and you shouldn't feel bad about it. Now, I will also tell you what not to do in times of uncertainty. Number one is do not be emotional. It's a really, really bad idea. When everybody else around you are emotional and running out like headless chickens, you stay focused, you stay the course. Number two, do not make any huge moves like selling all your portfolio or going all in on one stock. This isn't the right time in time of geopolitical uncertainty to make crazy moves like that. In fact, I would argue it's never a good time, but now it's even worse. Now, Number three, do not try to time the market. People who do that in normal times get punished. In times of geopolitical uncertainty, they get pulverized. Number four, you have to stay informed, my guy. I know it sucks watching the news and seeing all this horrific stuff coming out out of the Middle East and out of Ukraine, but you have to stay informed because geopolitics matters. It influences to your portfolio. It influences the stock market. You have to understand what's going on in the world, even if it's unpleasant to watch. Number five is being short-sighted. You can't basically say, oh my God, the world is coming to an end. Oh, this is the end. The world has been here for a long time. It was before we came here. And when all of us die, it will still be here. Don't be short-sighted. Look at it from a longer perspective, from kind of a more macro. And of course, a few stocks and categories where I don't recommend you put most of your money in because it's not a good time for it. Discretionary consumer spending, obviously, when times are bad and times are uncertain, people are not buying Rolex watches. Uh, banks and finance, obviously, you know, banks give out loans and they thrive when things are stable. Uh, growth in tech, 
tends to underperform in times of uncertainty, especially geopolitical uncertainty. Manufacturing gets bogged down because of supply chain issues. Logistics uh, companies, shipping companies like Marsk or like uh, Zim, there's a lot of them. You can see what the stock has been doing because, you know, when things get kind of unstable, these types of industries, they tend to underperform. Now, I do want to explain to you the importance of understanding what's going on right now in the Middle East in just one sentence. And then I'm going to give you kind of a segue to something really cool. So right now, there's a really interesting situation going on in Ukraine. We've talked a lot about it. I'm not going to go into it right now. At the same time, we have a very big crisis in the Middle East. Israel and Hamas in Gaza, all this stuff going on right now. I want to give you a quick explanation of one sentence, what's going on right now. So Hamas struck Israel. They basically went in and murdered a bunch of civilians, thousands of civilians. Um, absolutely horrific crimes against humanity. Uh, there's a lot of theories who sent them and why they did that. Uh, basically, the kind of prevalent theory right now is that Iranians are behind it because they wanted to basically torpedo the impending uh, peace deal between the Saudis and Israel by you know, letting Israel retaliate and doing Gaza what it's doing right now, basically causing the Saudis, which are Sunni Arabs, to basically distance from Israel because Gaza is also Sunni Arabs. Whether it worked or not, I don't know, but currently we have Hezbollah, Iran, Turkey and Russia literally sitting on the fence, uh, potentially starting a new conflict with Israel and the US. So this whole World War III is brewing up in the Middle East and it will have a massive impact on your portfolio. If you want to understand better geopolitically what's going on, I have a video explaining exactly what's going on right now in Israel and a whole bunch of videos with full updates on my second channel called the Tom Nash Report. I'm going to put the video right here so you can go check it out right now. If you haven't yet subscribed to this channel, you can do it right here. I'll see you in the next video.